read all the books. It's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Frogmaster's vlog for the Warmer for the Past and Gaming System, created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 55th book review of this vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing the full novel called Scars and the short stories called Brotherhood of the Moon and Allegiance where the first one is an uh, advent short story which was uh, available during the last year's event calendar and, uh, and the uh, Allegiance was uh, a part of the Seditions Gate Anthology. Now all of these stories written by Chris Ray. We can begin to talk about Scars which you will see here and we will talk about the front cover for this novel. On the front cover we see Primark Jagathan Khan of the White Scars as he is directing his legion when they come under attack by what I believe is the Alpha Legion. He is shown in a great details, but so are also the humans and the Astartes which are working underneath his command. The artist has truly captured the Mongolian culture which the legion is supposed to be based upon. I will give this front cover 7 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. Scars. Of all the legioners Astartes, the white scars of Jagatai Khan remain the most enigmatic and elusive. Born of a civilization that prizes honor, speed and fearsome loyalty, their allegiance has yet to remain unclear even as the galaxy is torn apart by Horus treachery. And both sides have apparently counted them among the potential allies in the war to come. But when the Alpha Legion launched an unexplained and simultaneous attack against the White Scars and the Space Wolves, the Khan must decide once and for all whether he will stand with the Emperor or the War Master, or neither. So prior to this no novel's release, this is all we knew about the ambush at Condax, uh, is that the Space Wolves and the White Scars were attacked by the Alpha Legion, and that the White Scars, without any proper explanation, uh, left them to return to what I would believe is Terra during, uh, in preparation for the Siege of Terra which would late, come later on. I thought there would be more interaction between the two Loyalist Legions uh, as I think that would have been a very interesting part of the series because uh, many have uh, considered uh, Space Wolves and the White Scars to be very similar when it comes to their cultures but that's far from it which has been very prominently mentioned in this novel and also the novella called The Brotherhood of the Storm. Uh, so that's why I felt that it would be interesting to see the interaction between these two legions. So those were my expectations, those, those, those were the only things I knew about Condax. Since I already knew that the Wraith can write some good space wolves, I was really looking forward to this part as, a, as I've already re reviewed his Battle for the Fang uh, Space Marines Battle novel. Uh, so this, this book opens up with the origin stories of two of the main characters from the novella Brotherhood of the Storm, which is Shiban Khan, the, the Khan of the Brotherhood of the Storm, and Torgun Khan, uh, which is the Khan of the Brotherhood of the Moon, uh, where the first of these two characters is brought up on the home planet of the Primarch, and who relish the thought of being a White Scar. The other one is a crybaby, only because he wasn't selected for Horus Legion, he's, uh, he's, uh, he wanted to be a Sons of Horus. Since because of this, this novel is supposed to be about this scar that has split the Legion in two. One wants to join Horus' uh, side of the rebellion and one wants... Uh, and the other one is oblivious to everything that is happening or, or around them. It's weird as this storyline falls into the background uh, and uh, as several other characters gets more room instead. One of those where we follow is the she chief stormseer called Targutai Yesu Yesugai, I believe it's pronounced, as he goes out on a quest to find out what has happened outside of Kondak, so he leaves the, the battle between uh, the White Scars and the Orcs and leaves to and search, what they, search for answers. He comes across survivors from the Shattered Legions who he befriends and shares an exceptional bond with. And after hijacking a word bearer's vessel, they come across the actual truth behind it all. Meanwhile, the Space Wolves fleet, uh, under the command of Lemur Russ, 
is going on an unknown destination of the sacking Prospero, uh, which we could see more prominently in A Thousand Sons and Prospero Burns, uh, when they, they come under the attack of the Alpha Legion. Here we see the beloved return of Bjorn who, and others from Prospero Burns, and I love these scenes in particular. It was great to see these characters once again and after being absent for so long. Uh, Jagatai Khan then realizes that everything isn't as it's supposed to be, and he also, as they also encounters the Alpha Legion, and they receive contradicting messages from both sides of this uh, conflict. Uh, in some messages it says that uh, uh, it speaks of Horus' betrayal, in others that Lima Rus killed uh, the entire legion of Magnus the Red, uh, which, paints up, which paints up him as a traitor, and then the urgent callings of Rogal Dorn, that everyone should be mustered back to Terra because of Horus. Uh, Jagatai Khan and his whole legion has this whole theme around it, that they are more like wild horses, just like space wolves are painted up to be as loyal hounds. So that's the, 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 the difference between these two legions. So instead of, and instead of following blindly the orders of others, he intends to seek out the truth for himself. So he goes to Prospero to, uh, to see for himself about all these rumors that has been circling about uh, in his uh, surroundings. This is, uh, there is a short interaction between the Space Wolves and the White Scars and, and I think that's one of the best parts of this novel. The Great Khan says that he can't stay, uh, he, he tells a messenger that he can't stay and that he wants to wish a safe winter or whatever they, they usually say to each other in the, in, in the Space Wolves Legion. Uh, and it cuts over to a surprise lemur in Russ uh, who has just read the message which ends until the next winter. This is quality comedy at, at its highest. It's so, it's so funny to see uh, how Jagatan Khan couldn't more or less care le he couldn't care less and then how Lima Russ re reacts to the message. It's so, so funny. Anyway, on, uh, then on Prospero, when he finally got, gets there, he managed to uh, find and talk to the ghost of his brother Magnus, who says that he was wrong and deserves everything that came for him. He is also told the truth of everything that is happening in the galaxy at this right moment. I love this scene as it shows that the last loyal part of Magnus the Red, after his big mistake, and how the Khan is the only one who is there to set him free. During this encounter we also get the beloved return of Reviol Arvida, the thousand son from the short story called Rebirth which is also written by Chris Rafe. Uh, but prior to all this, at the beginning of Shiban's uh, storyline, he managed to find the remaining bodies of those white scars which, were, which was killed in the Serpent Beneath novella, where he found a medal for lodges in the Legion. Uh, so that's, that's what I really like, how a small thing that happened in that novella becomes a very good, huge plot point in this book. So that, that's a really good connection, which I like. Uh, his uh, brother Torgun believes that he actually can. Torgun then believes that Shiban will actually join them in their cause, but he doesn't and instead uh, tries to repel this. Uh, fighting erupts uh, on the ships in, uh, in space ar orbiting around Prospero. And during this time, ships of the Death Guard arrive in, in the system. And then working as flashbacks during this novel, we also see uh, points working, our, our, working their way back before the ed Edict of Nikea, where Martarian, Primarch of the Death Guard, was its primary spokesperson. As Yagatai Khan was one of the supporters of the Librarius, they became bitter rivals which has a culminating duel at the end of this uh, novel. Uh, Mortarion, however, flees before Jagatai Khan could deliver the killing blow, and he stops the fighting in space and captures all the traitors. Uh, so this novel was written as a serial in 12 parts, and it becomes very ap apparent as, as each, each part is to have a beginning and an end. And I like the exploration and, and fleshing out of the Legion, and also how it portrays them, and as well as Space Wolves, uh, Magnus the Red and Mortarion, so Chris Wraith truly managed them all. 
the interaction between the legions is great as well uh, and it's only a shame that it's a bit too short for my taste and much focus lies on the second battle of Prospero, Prospero rather than the ambush at Kondak so I think that's also an uneven that I would have wanted to see more at Kondak rather than, uh, than Prospero it's a great story that not only includes the White Scars uh, parts of the series properly for the first time, but it also continues the storyline for the series and we get some continuation from, from uh, A Thousand Sons and Prospero Burns. And when this novel was building up to the betrayal, I got some very huge flashbacks to the beginning of the series during the opening trilogy when, when betrayal was building up that. So I, I got like flashbacks to that, those feelings. Unfortunately, the rivalry between Shiban and Torgon isn't as strong as, uh, as those characters, as interacting friends is very weak, and they also fall into the background as much as uh, so much else is happening uh, during this novel. This is, why, this is why I felt that the novella Brotherhood of the Storm should have explored the relationship between them much better than it did. Uh, the inclusion of Mortarion at the end felt also quite unnecessary if you ask me, as we know none of the Primarchs are, are in any danger as we already know the fate of them. So, so see, it's just seeing these uh, trying to battle each other is like, John, I already know what will happen, it, there is no tension. But, it, but as there are some character development, development for Mortarion, I will allow it for this sake. Uh, because of this, the ending is very abrupt and happens so very fast, however. Uh, but with the exception of Shiban and Torgon having a weak development in this uh, novel, every other character is fleshed out in a latently fashion. So with all this in mind, I will give this novel 8 out of 10 forks. And now we can move over to the Advent short story called Brotherhood of the Storm, uh, which was released as a short story of the 2014's uh, Advent calendar. Just like all the covers, it, it, it displays the legions it's all about, but here in particular it shows the mark of the main character's brotherhood. It's simple but tells you everything you need to know about it. I would give it 5 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. In the aftermath of the rebellion within his legion, Yagatai Khan ordered the trials of his wayward sons to determine whether or not they are, would, would atone. The proud Terran legionary Torgan Khan now stands before his accusers and must account for the events that would lead him to his, into outright heresy. So here Torgan gets to tell his tale of what actually happened. And it's a very short story, so he doesn't dwell too deeply behind his motivations, which I felt was weak, uh, just like in Scars. It's talently written, however, but it's too short to go into deeper grounds of anything. It, it's a small fiddler, uh, so it's something you can live with or without, uh, for the moment at least. So we give this short story 5 out of 10 forks. Now we can talk about the next short story which is called Allegiance, which you can find in the Seditions Gate anthology. Where we see the beloved return of the character called Reviol Arvida, the thousand son who first appeared in the short story called Rebirth, and later on then in Scars as well. He is trying to move on with everything since what happened on the Prospero. He considered himself as an outsider, as the White Scars are an unknown enigma to him, uh, and they appear to know more about him that he do than he does know about them. Arvida speaks with the Jesu guy about Araman during uh, one of their conversations, and he observes the White Scar in this manner, and he finds it very peculiar that the, that the Stormseer is trying to restrain his power so much. Yesuge continues uh, to speak and uh, speak of the infighting uh, at the end of Scars and how they have been forged to purge the bad blood from the Legion. Apparently there is a uh, repent for the traitors uh, as they might serve in suicidal attacks against the enemy. The Stormseer 
uh, offers a place in their legion to Ar Arvida and he, re he replies that he will think about it. Uh, during his sleep later on uh, that day, he begins, to, uh, he begins to have vivid dreams uh, of Prospero. The day after that, he is sparring with the Jesuge in the tra training areas. Ar Arvida's sight of uh, the future has been absent up until this point, when he manages to expect certain, certain attacks from Jesuge before they before they happen and then later on avoid them. So after the training, uh, he is giving he is given a new pauldron, uh, one of his shoulder uh, shoulder protections, uh, as the old one is ruined from the from his uh, uh, stays at Prospero. It carries the colors of the white scars and the marking is a mixture between the the, the serpentine sun of the thousand suns and the scar of the white scars. As his sight is returning, he, he is allowed to join them on the tribunal which the Primarch is hold, holding for all the traitor white scars. During it all, Yasuge translates everything that happens and so Arvida can actually also keep track on what is happening in, uh, during the tribunal. During it, he sees a white scar who swore a blood oath which he cannot break even if the Great Khan forgives him. Uh, prior to the tribunal, it becomes apparent that Arvida has uh, gone down with the, with the flesh change curse. His, uh, his future fate is still uncertain and that is how this, this short ends uh, after the fact that he wants his original pauldron to be fixed. So this, this short explores the continuity of the White Scars and Arvida after the Novel Scars. It opens up uh, a lot of uh, possibilities in the future and he managed to build up Arvida as a good character. Uh, so I think it's very interesting to see where, see where this is going. I will give this short story 7 out of 10 forks. And with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up on my videos and, and leave comments on things I'm doing good so keep on doing them and leave negative critique of things I'm doing bad so you either improve or remove the content entirely. And also don't forget to share this with your friends if it will be interesting, entertaining or simply inspiring. But other than that, thank you very much for watching this book review. For the call! Bye!